Okay. I'm at the end of the quest, and what I'm going to do is start at the end and then kind of go back to the beginning. I videotaped some of the work I was doing on this, and if you'll look, let me see if I can get my hand in this frame there. If you look right here, this is the digital readout, the sender, uh, and the sensor bar. The actual digital readout screen is on the left over there. This is one of the eBay ones that goes anywhere from $30 to $40 a piece. Uh, this is a 12 inch one. This is the second one I have on my lathe. And you'll see the other one I have uh, later on in this video and the brackets I made. The trick, like uh, with all projects, is you got to figure out how to mount it and how to make it work correctly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move up, move that out of the way for a second. And then here's the digital readout, which I accidentally left on last night. We'll come over here and videotape from this angle. This is the digital readout. You can go inches, fractions, uh, or metric on it. I'm going to zero it here. And then when you pull down on the handle to lower the quill, if you'll notice, try to get rid of this glare here. Um, if you'll notice, it's in fractions right now. There we go. But it does work. And what's happening is the sender is actually mounted to the face of the lathe. Uh, and then the rod, the measuring rod, is actually connected to the quill via the plate that I crimped on there. And if you'll notice, there's a slit. I used a hacksaw. I don't have a slitting saw. Uh, I bored the hole on the uh, lathe itself. Uh, I do have the dimensions I'll give them. However, I have found that um, these granite 1340s and 1324s, even though they're very similar devices, um, they're not all exactly the same. And I'm sure that goes for most lathes. So if you're going to try to make this, um, you're, you're going to definitely want to do your own measurements and use, if you're going to use my design idea, you're going to want to um, come up with your own measurements. Now let me turn this around just a second to show you the other side. You can, you can see right here, uh, this is where I countersunk uh, Allen head screw. That creates the pinch to hold it onto the quill, right, right there. Uh, this part does not turn. The part that turns, of course, is down here. And then this block is a spacer. This block actually mounts to the head itself. This block is held in place with a uh, screw from behind that's uh, inset. Now let me flip it over here to the other side. These two holes were already in the lathe. And then they're uh, 8 millimeter by 1.25 threads. And this is that spacer block. And then right here is a mount that actually came uh, with the digital readout kit itself. So it's relatively simple. This block mounts to the uh, lathe itself. This spacer block mounts to the original block here. And then I just drilled and tapped holes for the screws that came with the kit for this so that I can slide it in and out to make sure that this is vertical. Uh, so there's no stress on it at one end or the other. So it's a relatively simple project. Uh, it did take some time. Uh, I machined all of the sizes of my aluminum. This is quarter inch thick aluminum. You could have gone with, uh, you can go with thinner if you want to, or thicker. You can go with steel. Uh, it just, I had the aluminum. Uh, and then instead of drilling holes, I wanted to be able to adjust this up and down a little bit. So I made a, I milled a slot into it instead of uh, just drilling two holes. So that's the entire project. Uh, I did do some video which I will put right after this of some of the milling and drilling uh, and I did not uh, put the boring of the small hole or the large hole for around the quill. I apologize for that. I'll try to get that into another video when I do another project. So my digital readout, it does work. Now one thing that I do want to add to this and I will do a video, I promise. I want to bring a piece of aluminum across here out because this does not have a drill stop or a depth stop and then I have some threaded rod so I want to thread it close to this corner and then it'll run straight up and I have to figure out where I'm gonna put the two nuts to actually stop the quill from traveling down 
Um, I cannot do it in this area because of my um, precision adjustment here. It's just going to get in the way. And the rod might get in the way and I might have to figure something else out. But we'll visit that on another day. Hi. Uh, forget the background noise. It's a washing machine. My wife just started it. I'm working on this project for the uh, for my Granite 1340 Max. And I started a video earlier. I don't uh, know if I saved it or still have it. If I do, I'll add it to this one. But if not, just in case. What I'm doing is a digital readout um, for the quill for the mill and, and drill portion of the 1340. Now, what I, what I did was I got a piece of plate aluminum, um, quarter inch, forget how big the actual plate it was, but it's a piece that somebody gave me. And I should have showed this and I didn't, and I, I will next time, but I got the inside to one and seven eighths with a large drill bit, and then I bored the rest of it out until it just fits the upper portion of the quill that does not turn. It's where the quill actually seats. Um, once I did that, I had a little bit of reshaping to do on the outer edges. Uh, I've attempted to leave as much metal as I could because when this is actually sitting on the quill, uh, this is going to be the, the face of the mill here, the handles on this side. Um, the digital readout are the sender which looks like this and rides up and down this rail. Well, it's actually going to mount in a little bracket right, right here. And then this portion will actually be mounted to the mill itself in the front. There's already a couple of holes pre-drilled uh, and I plan on using those for another piece of this aluminum to come out uh, and then there's a plastic piece that will mount to that that's made for this sender. Uh, and it just snaps into place. So basically when the quill uh, goes up and down, um, this digital sender will remain stationary on the mill itself, on the quill. So, where are we right now? Uh, I bored the hole. That's completed. Uh, that took me forever because I was only taking a little at a time. I uh, reshaped the face just a little bit to fit the face of the uh, mill, or the mill head. Drilled a small hole here. This is a um, 10 by 32 thread. I got a little Allen head screw for that. And then on this side, what I've done, I, I left a mark. Let me get up and get a little closer here. What I did here is I'm, I'm using my hacksaw because I don't have a cutter. I'm going to cut a slit here to allow this to pinch on the quill. I've already drilled a hole in the side and it's down so far. Um, I'm going to recess this for the head of the uh, Allen screw and then bore the rest of it out to where the slit is and then this will be threaded. So I'm going to thread the whole thing. I'm going to enlarge the hole down to the slit after I cut it and then I'll countersink so that the uh, head of the Allen screw is not exposed out here at all. Uh, so I'll put that on video to follow this one once I get everything set up. So let me move the camera. Uh, turn it around and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so we're, we're over on the uh, mill, uh, the 1340 itself, and uh, I went ahead and I started this by hand. Uh, I did not use the quill, I didn't want to reset everything. So I'm going to go ahead and tap this the entire depth, and uh, once I've completed that, then I'll go ahead and bore, uh, cut the slot, or the slit. And once I cut the slit, I will bore the top portion straight through to the slit and stop so that the uh, screw will slide straight through without grabbing any threads. Uh, and then I'll countersink it and we'll see what happens. Uh, then I should be able to mount this on the quill. Uh, let's see, actually it's going to be mounted right here on this portion. Uh, which I'll get a better shot of that in a little bit. So I'm going to stop recording until I finish this threading. This is going to take me a few minutes. Um, and then once I get uh, ready to uh, do the drilling, I'll go ahead and come back on and, and do the drilling on the camera. 
Okay, here's uh, here's where we're at so far. This is the uh, milling and drilling head. And then here on the left is the handle I was talking about with your precision uh, handle as well. This is the piece of metal that I've been working on so far. What I've done is I've got it to fit around the spindle here. Uh, that part does not turn. This part down here does. Uh, I've got my groove, my slit in there. And then I went ahead right here and threaded all the way through to the other side of this uh, slit. Then I followed it through with a larger drill bit than the actual uh, bolt itself. And then I countersunk it with a countersink to where it does not protrude. I still need to clean this edge up right here just a little bit. In the front, I've got one hole for now. This hole is to mount the actual uh, sensor itself or the sender for the uh, digital readout that I purchased on eBay, one of my favorite stores. Okay, welcome back. Um, this right here is the actual sender itself. Uh, and then there's a sensor bar uh, that's magnetic or optical, I'm not really sure which one. And then this will be fixed right here. I'll have a piece of aluminum um, basically bridging right here to the sender and it'll also have a horizontal spot for my threaded rod to fit through for my uh, stop as well. So when I pull the quill and I get, I'll put the uh, camera on a tripod later and show you but basically this slides up and down. So with this being stationary as I pull down on the handle that sensor will read the depth. Uh, and then this is the digital readout that came with it. Uh, this is not its permanent home, but right now it's magnetic. You can put it anywhere you want to, which is nice. Uh, I have another one here that I use on my cross slide, uh, and I manufactured this fitting as well. Uh, two pieces of, again, quarter inch aluminum. This had to bring it out because of the uh, nuts, the uh, weigh uh, adjusters back here. Let me see if I can get the camera shot down in there. You can see the nuts down here for adjusting the ways. And uh, this sender was bumping into them, so I had to use this as a spacer. I went ahead and slotted it so I could adjust it up and down and so that it would run level across the uh, cross slide as well. Okay, back over at the workbench. I have uh, put some black marker or black sharpie on here as a layout die and I locked my vernier caliper and what we're going to do is we're going to scribe a line up here and then I'll measure up from the bottom for the first hole and the second hole and then we'll go ahead and center punch them. I'll use a center drill then a drill bit to clear all the way through them uh, and then countersink the heads and then we'll go ahead and put this in place and then I'll measure for the uh, actual sender itself. This will come off and we'll attach a mill and uh, attach that other piece. So we need to go 0.347 over. And then And I have to do a couple more measurements, so I'll be right back. Okay, for the first one, 0.59. And then the second one, I add 2 inches to that. So 2.59. There's 1. Two, point five nine. That last little bit's difficult. We'll go ahead and lock it off. And I'll come up here and scribe that. Turn that off, come over here, 
Now this is where I realize some of my inaccuracy may come in, uh, but we're going to drill these holes a little oversized to allow for some adjustment anyway. So we'll mark those. And then we'll head back over to the uh, drill and mill. So we'll be back.